Hello again. It's Sandy Wiley, and we are all finished with Carl Jung's archetypes. But, 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 <laughs> we are not finished with the great doctor, the great Swiss doctor, Carl Jung. And today, what we're going to talk about is the personal unconscious. The personal unconscious, a concept developed by Carl Jung, refers to all the information and experiences of an individual's lifetime. And for me, that's a very long lifetime because I'm 58 years old that have been forgotten or repressed, but continue to influence their behavior and attitudes on an, on, on an unconscious level. Now, I know I have a lot of repressed memories. I know I was severely um, abused as a child. And I also suffer, I don't know if anyone knows this, I never really talked about it from amnesia. Um, I don't remember um, all of my abuse. I completely um, dissociated, you know. I, I just, like, blocked that part of my life completely out, you know, or put it in a little box <laughs> in the brain somewhere here and just, like, you know, locked it up like Pandora's box. So... I know I re react, part of the borderline personality disorder, but I know I react to things in a way that aren't natural or normal for someone else to react, that they wouldn't react to the things like I do because of that repressed, you know, memory. Even in some of my therapies, uh, I had this one, a couple of psychologists who recommend uh, maybe I do hypnotism, maybe um, if I was hypnotized. Um, by someone trained in, um, in that field, in that, you know, to hypnotize, that maybe, maybe I could recall some of that um, amnesia or repressed traumatic um, childhood memories. I think sometimes there's something, um, even from your present, like, let's say that, um, you were brutally raped, gang raped, or something like that, and um, you just completely shut down because you couldn't you couldn't deal with that, and um, so you just completely blocked it out. You know, you have no memory of it, but then you go off and you um, you you know you respond in a way to to men that is inappropriate. Like if, a, 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 let's say a man offers you a compliment or something, you know, you scream at him, you yell at him, you maybe slap him. Um, what do you think I am? You know, some commodity or something. And they have no idea like what they did. Like I just said, you know, you look sexy in that dress or something. I didn't mean to offend you, but you have no idea why you're, you're going off on him either because this is all like, blocked out this is all repressed from your childhood from when this happened you know i'm not saying this happened to me i just telling you i have amnesia i was you know horrifically abused i don't remember any of it i remember some of it uh but i remember the parts when i later on when i was older i don't remember the parts when i was younger and an innocent child they couldn't fight back i don't remember those parts um, but this is what Carl Jung is saying here. This aspect of the unconscious mind contains memories, perceptions, and thoughts that may not be consciously accessible, but can potentially become conscious. It also includes complex combinations of such contents, which Jung referred to as complexes. There are emotionally charged associations or ideas that have a powerful influence over an individual's behavior and attitudes. See, this is how we get our attitudes and, and behaviors about certain things that we're not even, you know, aware of how 
we came to be like this or why we, you know, feel these feelings. For instance, here's a good example now that I'm reading here. A person might have a fear of dogs due to forgotten childhood incidents. This fear, while not consciously remembered, is stored in the personal unconscious and could cause an irrational response whenever the person encounters dogs. Now, I just gave you an example about a woman being, you know, I don't want to say the word again because YouTube is so damn strict lately. I mean, it's just pathetic. It's very hard to talk about real subjects on my YouTube because, you know, they prefer you, prohibit you, um, prohibit you from saying this or that, you know, and these are real things. These are, these are important topics, but that example is really good. The one I just read to you that let's just say, and I was attacked by a dog, but I remember it cause I was 13 years old. This is what happened. I love animals and I love, you know, I, I just love animals. And I was walking along 13 years old. Um, and there was this black dog. I don't know what kind of dog. It was black. It was outside in this front yard on a chain. Very quiet dog, you know. Um, so I went over, very quiet. You know, it wasn't friendly, but it, it didn't act like it was, you know, an attack dog. It didn't act ferocious. It just was a very quiet dog. Let me warn you. People and animals, okay, watch out for the quiet ones. That's sage advice here. Watch out for the quiet ones. The ones that bark, 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 bark. You don't have to worry so much about them. It's the quiet ones. This dog was exceptionally quiet. It just stood there like this. And I said, oh, cute. So I sat patting. Before I knew it, the dog was up on top of me, jumped me in a grip, okay? It was a big dog. And it started biting my breast, okay? I was in utter shock. If the dog was not on a chain, it was chained in the front yard, it was on a chain, he would have killed me, okay? He probably would have killed me. He was so ferocious. He, gr I had to be in, go to the hospital. All I did was pat him. I was in utter shock. Like, I didn't understand. But all I remember about the dog was how very quiet. You know how dogs are. You know, they, they, they you know, they're animated, right? Think about it. Dogs are animated. You know, they wag their tail. <laughs> you know, they lick their lips. They try to kiss you. They kind of, you know, they're animated. This dog stood perfectly still. Just like this. Didn't make a peep before he attacked me. That's why I'm warning you. It's true with animals and people. People who are very still and silent are the ones you have to watch out for the most. And so, yeah, so later on, I mean, um, I'm not really afraid of dogs now, but, you know, if someone had a horrific experience like that, they might hate dogs, you know, and not really understand why if they block that out, out of their memory, you know, they might not understand why they're repulsed by dogs. Um, if they block that, you know, block that out. In Yang's model of the psyche, the personal unconscious exists alongside the conscious mind. So they, they exist alongside each other. And the collective unconscious. The latter of which contains universal archetypes shared among all humans. Well, 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 we already talked about all the archetypes. And I really don't want to go into that again. The three component, components interact with each other and contribute to an individual's overall personality and behavior. So this makes sense. I mean, you know, think about it. If you are viciously attacked by dogs, you're not going to like dogs, right? If you are viciously attacked by men, you're not going to like men. And my son was viciously attacked by a type of man. Now, I can't go into that. All right, for several reasons. And since that has happened, 
I despise that type of man. Also woman. You see what I'm saying? Because now I associate that type with what happened to my son. So see, people make these, I'm, I'm consciously aware of that association, but sometimes you're not consciously aware of your associations. Like maybe it's a smell. Okay. Um, maybe the smell of, I don't know, it could be any smell. Say the smell of cigars. Something happened to you when you were little. Say your father burnt cigars on, I'm not going to go say it. You get what I'm saying, all right? He put out his cigars in places other than ashtrays. Say that happened. And you block that out. Maybe you were two or three. You block that out. Now, anytime you smell a cigar, see a cigar, you go nuts. You don't even know why you're going nuts. You just, you know, you have panic attacks, post-traumatic stress disorder, and you have no idea what it is and why you're reacting this way. It's because of the trauma that you had that you blocked out. Um, maybe we'll go into hypnotism. I don't know if, you know, I've never been hypnotized, if any one of you, you have been hypnotized please let me know what it's like um a psychologist once said that i can't be hypnotized because i'm a control freak he said in order to be hypnotized you have to learn to let go you have to learn to trust you have to because right you're putting your whole and i don't trust anyone all right everything of which i know but of which i am not at the moment thinking Everything of which I was once conscious, but have now forgotten, see? Everything perceived by my senses, but not noted by my conscious mind. Everything which involuntarily and without paying attention to it, I feel, think, remember, want, and do. All the future things which are taking shape in me will sometime come to consciousness. All this in the context of of the unconscious that was from Carl Jung in 1921 now it's important to note that the contents of this personal unconscious are not always negative so you might have a lot of great um, memories that you repressed and you're not aware of um, maybe like you know I don't know how many we could go really philosophical we could go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and I could spend hours doing this video um, if you believe in reincarnation maybe you lived another life as who knows um, like that you had a mansion you were a princess or something and you know you see what I'm saying and now that, that was a great memory. That was a good memory. But um, all of a sudden, you want to buy a Victorian mansion. And your husband says, why do you want to do that? We can't afford all that money. Well, I know I have to. I, it feels like I lived here. You walk in one and you go, I've lived in a house like this. You know what I mean? So it's not just saying like, like the father with the cigar, not putting it out in the ashtray. See what I'm saying? It could be something like you have a beautiful memory that... Um, that's repressed that you don't remember. Maybe you were bringing something else reincarnated. If you believe in that stuff, I'm not saying that that's the way it is. I'm just saying that it could be, uh, it's a plausible explanation is what I'm saying. Now, the collective unconscious, a concept by Carl Jung refers to shared inherited unconscious knowledge and experiences across generations expressed through universal symptoms. Oh yeah. Symbols. I'm sorry. I already, I've already said that. Okay. Now we already, I've already been through the, um, the archetype. So I don't want to go into that, but this, this is a very, um, very deep, um, subject that we could you know spend a lot of time focusing on um i don't know if any of you are aware that you know that you have repressed um memories i know i do and that i have amnesia and i don't remember all that has happened to me and i know that it was horrific and um 
because the parts that I do remember are quite horrific. So, and I know I've blocked out a lot of my childhood, um, especially the time when my father left, left home and I was all alone with a narcissistic, very abusive mother. Now, I don't remember that time. I was told, they told me about that time. I don't remember that time myself. I was told, you know, that my father left when I was like for a few years between two and five and I lived with my mother um, and I don't remember any of that period. So I think that's when she really abused me horrifically. Maybe I was abused by one of her boyfriends. Maybe in ways, I don't know. I'm not saying I was. All I'm saying is during that chunk of time, I have no recollection of. And this, this is what Carl Jung is saying, you know. This is the personal unconscious. This is what impacts me and this is what affects me today. This is why I am the way I am today and why people are the way they are because of this. And let me know, um, maybe hypnotic hypnotism uh, might help me maybe re recall but you know what I really don't want to know for someone with an insatiable curiosity as me I'd rather leave Pandora's box closed because I already have enough rage like an inferno inside of me for the things that I do know can you imagine if I unlocked Pandora's box and found out what really happened to me in my childhood all the horrific abuse when my father left home and I was alone with my narcissistic abusive mother. Imagine if I really tapped into that. I could, I could become so psychotic that I'd probably have to be hospitalized. I never was hospitalized for mental illness. Never. I was never hospitalized. Only for my tonsils. Tonsillectomy when I was like eight years old. And only when I had <laughs> my two babies, my sons. I stayed in the hospital a couple of days when I gave birth to my sons. But I never, ever been hospitalized for a mental illness. I'm not putting people down who have at all. I'm just saying that I never have. But I think that if I did, you know, open Pandora's box and got at those repressed memories, I think I would become so psychotic that I would have to be hospitalized. So, so I think some things, some things are better left left alone. That's what I believe. If after all these years, you know, I'm none the wiser about what happened, leave it alone. That's my advice for you. Leave it alone because sometimes it's not worth grabbing onto, especially if all the people that were involved are dead. What good is it? You know, you can't go and talk about it with them. They're dead, you know? So what's the point of you knowing? Sometimes knowledge is dangerous. Okay. So that's what I'm going to tell you. That's what I'm going to leave you with. Sometimes knowledge can be dangerous. And watch out for the quiet ones. People and pets. All right, until next time.